So um, we, it, one of my previous video, which I already explained, like how do you install an app server and even how do you create some users and groups over there. And also I have used a, a Linux client to integrate with LDAP, but today's session we are going to talk about using an application or using Jenkins application to integrate with LDAP so that it can be configured into single sign-on so that so it, it would be much useful for the companies so whoever is using uh, you know a single sign-on concept let's go ahead and um, do that particular one and uh, for that actually you need to have a uh, LDAP server installed already and I already have that so let me log into my front end of my LDAP related things so here is um, my dashboard of my LDAP and I have uh, two users created also you come to the groups I have uh, two groups created let's go ahead and um, so go with the Jenkins and let's see how do we integrate um, our um, Jenkins with uh, LDAP so for that let me log into the Jenkins system So here is my Jenkins system. So in order to configure um, with LDAP, so you need to go to uh, Manage Jenkins, and from there uh, you'll be having global uh, configure global security. And once you are inside there. We'll be having a concept of um, you know, um, an option for LDAP. You just need to use that particular one. So here, uh, these are the default options which you have, and it is using the Jenkins own user database for uh, username and passwords. But in our case, we just would like to go for LDAP. And while going with LDAP, so it is asking for the information, couple of information, and it is asking for your LDAP server uh, and its port. The LDAP server IP address is so. This is the IP address. As I'm using a cloud machine, I can even provide the um, the private IP address of my server. So which is again uh, this one. So which is nothing but a public IP or referring. But anyhow, I'm doing server-server communication. I'm just going with this one. Now, okay. So you can just go ahead and test the uh, LDAP settings here, and it is asking for. To provide any other any username you know uh, out there whatever you have so here uh, whatever the username you have you just provide that particular username and password and so that it is going to check that whether that particular uh, user is able to log into this particular one so but we're getting an error here so saying that authentication file of course so only providing the LDAP server IP address may not be uh, the enough details just need to provide little more details and for that yet you have advanced server configuration so let me go inside that and inside that you have a, a root dn option so root dn so how do you get that is so if you go to ldap op, ldap related i mean ldap dashboard on the above you have a tree view so if you just click on that it, it will provide you the root dn so here is the dn information so here um, this is what the my root dn main dn and just providing that particular details okay and uh, <clears throat> and after that so i am using uh, manager so every uh, every root dn will be having a, a manager person and by default and his name is manager i have used the default one and here is a manager dn and i'm going to provide this particular dn information out there okay so here is the manager dn and the manager will be having a password so if you just follow my video of previous how to install LDAP, so you'll understand this particular uh, uh, what what is the, what is the value you have to provide over there. Now I would like to um, you know, test my LDAP settings, and uh, again the concept is same. You know, I'll just go for uh, the username, same username. So this is the username, and the password is password, and we can just give a test. Now you can see that the authentication is successful. That means the configuration which you provided is working fine. Now I can just go ahead and save it, and um, and I can log out to this particular uh, um, to the admin user, and I can use uh, the LDAP users now, and they can log into the system. So you can see that now JSmith has just logged into the system, and 
let me log out with as j smith and i have another user as gand so i'll be just going with the as gand user and the password is again what are the password of the user so just provide that and you can see that you know, so so we could do that right so that is all for this video okay thank you everyone thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and please enable the bell button so that you will you will get the uh, new videos notifications to you okay thank you thank you